Hello guys, Aloy Andalus from ambfx.com and Effective TDs. And today we have uh, Arnold 5.1 and we have the Max Bridge that is the version 2.0930. It's a program that connects with Arnold. So I will explain you a little what we have and how to use optics uh, denoiser in Max because it's not super straightforward and I had some problems. So I will I want to share it with you so you have it easier than me to start using that. So basically, we had the uh, optics, it's the denoiser from NVIDIA that use the, um, the graphic card to accelerate and create a denoise of your image super fast. You will get a clean image much faster than before. We get a tune shader. Also, we get uh, different things like procedurals. Now you can pick an alembic object to a procedural object in Arnold. It's the, like a B-Ray instancing. It's an object that instance at render time for a very memory efficient uh, rendering. Also, Arnold incorporates a denoiser called Noise. It's his own uh, denoiser, but that's basically if you want to denoise uh, post render. A uh, pretty cool thing that they introduce is also the operators, what they call operators. Basically, in your material slate, you can change properties of objects. Uh, like visibility, materials itself, uh, even move or rotate objects at render time. If you have a huge uh, big pipeline, you can create tools that benefit from that. If you don't have a big pipeline, even if you are a single user, you can create a lot of cool stuff with this. And basically, it's only the beginning. They will keep improving it over time. So I think that it's something very cool. You have three, uh, 3ds Max 2018 or 2019, how do you install Arnold 5.1? You need to go to the Solid Angle page. In Solid Angle, if you go to Login and Register, if you have a password from Solid Angle, you can use this one to download 5.1. Or you can have a Autodesk uh, license. With Autodesk license as well, you can log in. Myself, I have a student version of Autodesk and I can use the my student account and there is no problem. So here you will install Arnold 5.1. That's the main renderer. But then you need as well the Max 2A. That's a plugin in Max that connects with Arnold. To do so, you go to Arnold, then you go to downloads. And if you go down, you have Arnold for 3ds Max. You can download 2018 or 2019, depending on what you have installed. I will show you on 2018. You don't need even to log in to download that. You install all this and you will have, you are ready to go, but don't try it yet to render because you will have crash and problems using optics. What you need to do, uh, do right click NVIDIA control panel. You need to make sure to have the good driver. And to do so, you go to system information and make sure that at least your driver is over 390. I installed the latest one, it's 391. Uh, if you are on 380 or below, simply go to NVIDIA and download the latest um, drivers from, for your card. Because if you don't do so, it will crash max. So I prepared here a scene to show you how to set up Arnold to use optics. It's not very straightforward. I talk with them and looks like they will like to improve it over time. Next version will be a little easier to set up. So right now, I prepared this as an example. I wanted to do it kind of complex. I have this box. We have this wall between and this is a light, a single light. So I will have a lot of noise. I do it in purpose. It's a kind of difficult to scene because the light, it's, it's all a bouncing light. I will use Active Shade, switch to Arnold. And then on Arnold, Let's go to AOBs. You need to add an AOB. It's a render pass in Arnold. And you need to add one. Add our AOB and we will add an RGBA pass. The property of the RGBA is also the, um, the beauty pass. So we will see is what we see on the active shade. Let's add this. And now when we select it, we have the option of use the noise. Selecting that, it will denoise the image. If you have different multiple graphic cards, if you go to system, 
you can have manual device selection. If you don't select anything, automatically will use whatever you have. And now another thing that we can do is that we can use the new adaptive sampling and progressive render that are new from 5.1. So in this mode, you can turn this at zero, the camera samplings, and turn off adaptive sampling. Let's give four maximum samples. You can play also with the noise if you want, and let's activate progressive render. Something new as well on system is that we can turn off show bucket corners. I have it off by default. I like to don't see the buckets. And we can switch it to random so the buckets will be randomized. Now, if we render this, we will see the noise image. But if you switch the, um, the buffer with the noise, we have the denoise image already. So you can switch between RGBA and the denoise version. As you can see, it's pretty clean and conserve very well the details. Uh, something, yeah, remember that when you switch it after when you open it again, automatically will go to the denoise pass. But the first time you need to switch it you manually. And as you can see, at the beginning it takes a while because during the, um, the preview doesn't do the, um, the denoise, but once we have the denoise kick in, it's super clean. We can, maybe we need more light there. Take in mind that I am in a laptop and it's not uh, really fast. I have a uh, four cores. So if you go in a Ryzen or something similar, you will have way faster feedback than that. But I think that now it's pretty cool to see in like 10 seconds, we have a very nice image. And if you let it cook for some more time, it's getting more and more detail, but the image is totally clean. And as well, that's a kind of extreme situation where we have only one light and all this light that we have here, it's basically um, bouncing light, as you can see here. There is people complaining that Arnold is really slow compared with V-Ray. I think that it's comparing apples with um, cars, I don't know. Uh, Arnold leads uh, brute force Monte Carlo uh, path tracing. If you add your B-Ray as complete brute force, you will see that as well. It's I will say that it's even slower than, um, than Arnold. Arnold is pretty optimized to work on these conditions. And yeah, it's doing a very good job. The, the noise, you can see, switch the noise image for the denoise. I think that's pretty nice. Yeah, so I like Arnold. I don't know what do you guys think, but it's coming pretty cool things into Arnold. Right now, with Forest Pack version 6 that will launch on 20th of April, they incorporate support for Arnold procedurals. This will mean that with Forest Pack, you will be able to render billions of uh, objects. And Arnold is really good rendering a lot of geometry. So this will be very cool. And if you go to Effective TDs uh, Forum, we have we are adding different information. We have Arnold by GPU. They did a conference like two weeks ago, showcasing how they port Arnold to to the GPU, and they are taking some time to to do this port. But really, what they are doing is pretty great. It's almost done. Uh, basically, what they are doing is that the entire engine Arnold will be for CPU or for GPU. In Bray RT, it's a separate, a separate engine. So you have some things that are still not implemented. Um, they are now with Bray Next will be pretty complete. But Arnold, what they want is that the, when they launch it, will be only Arnold, and you will have the option to to say if you want to render between the CPU or the GPU, but the image will be exactly the same and everything will be supported in both formats. And yeah, I like a lot Arnold. I am using it at home. At work, we still use B-Ray and I think also B-Ray is great. It's simply that now that we have Arnold integrated in 3ds Max, 
um, there is already a lot of companies using Arnold. I think that the use will be more extend over and over over time. And since we are having multiple plugins that now they are supporting Arnold, uh, will be only better and better. So let me know if you have any problem on the comments. And thank you guys. See you soon.